you live for those tight the days when the band is together because there's nothing can quite equal it. Nothing's quite like having a man in every corner in the room. Everybody's listening to everybody else and you're playing off each other a little bit. So being sensitive to to what the other person is doing is it's an important part of playing and the vibe of the band. Mark Knopfler of Dire Straits understood the special quality of playing in a band. He understood the camaraderie it creates between the members and how they become like a family. He also understood how easily that bond can be broken. It only takes a few sour notes or hurt feelings. Keep watching as Mark Knopfler reveals why Dire Straits will never get back together. Mark Before Dire Straits Mark was born August 12, 1949 in Glasgow, Scotland. His mother was a teacher and his father an architect and chess player who fled Hungary in 1939 to escape Nazi persecution. Mark went to Beersden Primary School in Scotland for two years. He was inspired by his uncle's harmonica and boogie-woogie piano playing. It inspired him to become familiar with various styles of music. He nagged his father for an expensive Fender Stratocaster electric guitar like Hank Marvin's. What he eventually got was a cheaper Hofner super solid guitar. Mark got a Saturday job at the Newcastle Evening Chronicle when he was 13. That's where he met poet Basil Bunting, who he later wrote a tribute to in 2015. He sought his dreams of music by hitchhiking through the country and continent. He was influenced by the sound of Elvis and guitarists like Chet Atkins, Scotty Moore, and B.B. King. He tried forming several bands in the 60s. He appeared on local television with classmate Sue Herkham at age 16. He graduated from Harlow College in 1968 after a year of studying journalism. He was hired as a junior reporter for the Yorkshire Evening Post and befriended Steve Phillips. They formed a duo called the Duolian String Pickers and played at local venues. Mark then went back to school and studied at the University of Leeds. He recorded a demo of an original song called Summer's Coming My Way. It featured him on guitar and vocals, Steve Phillips on second guitar, Dave Johnson on bass, and Paul Granger on drums. They, along with vocalist Mick Dewhurst, joined in a band called The Silver Heels. Mark graduated from school again in 1973. He tried joining other bands. There was one night when he was jamming with friends and found an old acoustic guitar. Its neck was so warped, he had to finger pick to prevent it from breaking. This led to his signature style, or as he puts it, his voice on the guitar. He stayed with the Brewers' Droop for a bit, then became a lecturer at Lawton College for three years. He was still performing at the time in a band called the Cafe Racers. His brother David moved to London, and they shared a flat with John Isley. Mark moved in with them, and it was clear how well they played together. The band's initial success Dire Straits was formed in London in 1977. Mark formed it with himself on lead vocals and guitar, his brother David on backup guitar, and their friends John Ilsley on bass and Pick Wither on drums. They released their self-titled album in 1978 to much acclaim with the smash hit Sultans of Swing. They found global success with other hits like Romeo and Juliet and Money for Nothing. Dire Straits reached their peak in 1985 with their most famous album, Brothers in Arms. It featured hits such as So Far Away and Walk of Life. It sold more than 30 million copies, the eighth best-selling in UK history. It also has the distinction of being the first to sell a million copies on CD. During their time together, Dire Straits sold between 100 and 120 million units, making them one of the best-selling artists of all time. They also have the record for the fifth longest time on the UK charts at 1,000 weeks. Their awards include four Grammys, three Brit Awards, two MTV Video Music Awards, and several others. Their breakups John and Mark were the only members to stay in the band for its entire existence. Pick left in 1982 after the fourth album, Love Over Gold. David left in 1980 after their first two albums. He was asked about the decision in an interview and said, did your brother know you were going to leave? I mean, was it like the... Yes and no, no, not really. I think it was just, you know, we were, we were all burnt out. Too many gigs, too much work, too much stress, not enough downtime. And things were just, you know, going from bad to worse. And I just I decided I had enough. So 
you know, I booked a flight and got back, came back to England. And I didn't regret it for a second. Dire Straits then became a two-member ensemble. They had to hire musicians when they went on tour. They took a break in 1988 and returned in 1990. Their final tour sold over 7 million tickets. It included 300 shows and played to over 7 million people. It was successful, but too much so. Mark found the scale they had reached dehumanizing. He needed a break after working various jobs since he was 14. The band played their final show in 1992 in Zaragoza, Spain. The official breakup came in 1995. It was an amicable split they believed happened at the right time. John remembers Mark saying something along the lines of, Success is great, but fame is what comes out of the exhaust pipe of a car. It's something you don't really want. Why they'll never get back together Mark admits the chance of a Dire Straits reunion is unlikely. He's still close with many of his former bandmates. They've even been his collaborators. He appeared on a recent charity single with Guy Fletcher for Teenage Cancer Trust. Over 60 performers, including heavyweights like Bruce Springsteen, Sir Brian May, and Eric Clapton, united for a nine-minute recording of Going Home theme from Local Hero. The single also featured contributions from Mark's supergroup Guitar Heroes. They included performers like Slash, Sting, Roger Daltrey, and Sir Ringo Starr. If the band members are so friendly, why will there never be a reunion? Mark explained a few of his reasonings on an episode of British talk show BBC Breakfast. I've always loved, I love Dire Straits and I love doing all that, but what I wanted to do was just to expand and work with different players and have a bigger lineup. You know, the, the last time I had the band in, and that's the high point for me, and you've got, yeah, I, I would probably have had about six or seven guys in, you know, it would be bigger than a little four piece that was stripped down than when we had it. And that was great for, and I loved it. I had, I had an absolute ball for as long as it lasted until it got so big that I didn't know the names of all the roadies. It was just getting big. Like family? Uh, it got so big we were actually leapfrogging stages. <laughs> uh, and that's what you have to do when it gets to a certain scale. Other members of the band have given their two cents on the prospect of a reunion as well. That includes John. He said he regularly sees the band's former manager, who says that every time he has lunch, he gets offers of large amounts of money to get Dire Straits back together. Where's the band today? Mark recently spent time working on a solo album in his studio, which he said he never had a bad day in. His debut solo album was Golden Heart, released in 1996. He released at least eight more after doing that, along with many soundtrack albums. But his latest solo, One Deep River, was released April 12, 2024. John has also done some solo music, including eight solo albums. The latest one, Eight, was released in 2022. After that, he gave up music to try a new passion. He studied painting in London for years and began doing art shows. In his own words, he leaned his bass against the wall and said, Thank you very much, but I'm doing something different now. Dire Straits was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2018. They were the first ones to be inducted without another famous artist giving a speech for them. John gave the speech. They didn't all reunite there, and Mark didn't even show up. John inducted them in and assured the world Mark's decision to not show up was for personal reasons. He mentioned the band is more than one person and that they were still strong as a collective. Other ex-members have been working to keep the band's legacy alive. The current lineup is Alan Clark, who played keyboards from 1980 to 95, Danny Cummings on percussion from 1990 to 92, and Mel Collins on saxophone from 1982 to 83. They note on the band's social media posts that the information they provide is the closest you're going to get. By that, they mean the closest we'll get to another show because the band is unlikely to ever reunite. Now it's time to hear from you. Who's your favorite British rock band? Let us know in the comments section below.